Hey Dale, have you seen the new Foundation Disc Golf video? No, I haven't seen it, but I heard it's kind of trash though. Oh, hey Hunter. What is up disc golfers? Today on Iceberg TV, I'm really excited to do a full Disc Mania based episode. I think this is going to be a fun time because we don't really talk about Disc Mania as much as Innova and Discraft, but Disc Mania is one of my personal favorite brands and about 50% of my bag is Disc Mania stuff, um, depending on the day and what comes in and out. But let's get this underway. So Idlewild Open, first round, Eagle McMahon coming off a massive win at Deeglo. He's coming out hot, he's playing extremely good golf, he's looking really good, and he's in first place. We knew Paul was gonna be playing well because Paul plays well at this course, but I would like to give a massive shout out to Jeremy Kohling, Andrew Marweed and Kyle Klein, and Thomas Gilbert, all putting up massive 1050 rated rounds, much higher than their personal rating. I'm not entirely sure if all these guys are gonna be able to continue to shoot as well as they have, but I do think this course plays very well for forehand players, uh, especially like Jeremy Kohling, who likes to throw a lot of hyzer flip forehands with discs that will turn a little bit and then get a big fade at the end. And he's also really good with his fairway drivers on hyzer flip forehands as well. So he's able to hit a lot of these tight wooded forehand favorable lines. And it's obviously showing with him being in third place. And that was what I was saying about with Brody is Brody's forehand just isn't quite there, so he's not going to be able to get a lot of the birdies that the forehand guys are able to get. And this is a perfect example. Jeremy Kohling has not been playing very well this year. Um, I haven't really seen him in the hunt for, I mean, barely even top 10 finishes that much this year, but I'm really happy to see Big Germ doing well. He's one of my favorite players. Uh, him and Nate Sexton were two of my favorite players very early on when I started playing disc golf. So anytime they're doing well, I'm happy. And I can't say enough about this guy right here, Kyle Klein. Kid's a beast. I think Kyle Klein could be the next Paul McBeth, and he's pushing the boundaries as far as how to properly play disc golf and how to properly choose which disc to throw and the lines he's able to throw with the consistency that he has. I think he's going to be someone who can push the boundaries and raise that ceiling even higher, possibly even past Paul McBeth one day. Kyle Klein, very underrated. Good to see him in third place. I'm really excited to see this third place battle who comes out on top and if any of these guys can give Paul and Eagle a run for the money. Now, I do think Eagle's gonna be able to hold on for at least one more round, and then I think Paul could just shoot a super crazy third round and maybe win this thing, but I mean, really it's up in the air right now. Disc golf is super exciting right now. I'm super pumped to see who can win this thing. It's a very tight race. It's anybody's game. Round two is gonna be that separation round, and I can't wait to see what happens from here on out. Now, one thing I want to talk about with Disc Mania real quick, uh, quick is I actually really like this disc. Um, I used to bag a Cloudbreaker first run. Um, I really like this disc for backhand hyzers and forehand flex shots, and it's a really good disc. And it seems like they may have made this run a little bit more stable than the last run, which I think would be a really good thing for this disc. And I actually took my Disc Mania Cloudbreaker out of my bag because it got too understable. But if they came out with a little more stable run, I would without a doubt put one of these back in my bag. Um, they, I mean, they, they go so fast and all these all these releases are so hyped nowadays. I, I mean, I probably won't get one. It's tough to get any good discs in Australia at this current time, but if I was to be able to get one, I would definitely bag it and I would definitely throw it. But I just wanted to give everybody a notice that these are out and it is good disc, especially for you know, power backhand throwers who want a big distance disc. If you have a lot of power, you can throw them on hyzer, they'll flip and then fade. Or if you have less power, you can throw it out flat and it'll hyzer, or you can throw it on big flex forehand lines. Really good disc, really underrated. A lot of people don't bag the DD3s or the cloud breakers, but I think this is a really good disc and it seems like they tried to make this run a little bit more stable. So I'm definitely interested in one of these, but you know, I just won't be able to get one. That's not through lack of wanting one. Now, the biggest news in this video is our boy Simon Lazat. He did get injured. He hurt his ankle. And let's just have a look at the video real quick right here. This is Simon's Instagram story. I know a lot of you guys aren't on Instagram. So he posted this and then he posted the video of him. He slips and it was a really weird looking fall, honestly. 
I mean, we, we need to look at that one more time. So I did DM Simon um, and he responded to me. I DM'd him after he put that picture of his ankle up. He was probably in the process of pulling this up right here. <clears throat> but big slip and you know, that's, that's the danger of having a tee pad up on a shelf like that is, you know, if you do slip, you can fall and seriously hurt yourself. So um, Simon has been nursing an elbow injury as well. So I did message him and I was like, oh yeah, it'll also give time for that elbow to heal. And you know, we've all been really enjoying seeing Simon play. And we all know the pro tour is not the same as Simon's not playing. Simon's the, you know, the favorite player of probably at least 50% of disc golf fans in general. He's a really nice guy, he's really cool. And he's been doing really good on YouTube. And uh, we all wish Simon a very speedy recovery. And hopefully this can wind up just being a good thing. No real serious injury and hopefully his ankle can heal up and his elbow can heal up all in one and he can come back full strength and really come back and compete at a high level because he's been playing really well. Um, just to go back to the um, DMs here, I did message Simon. I just said, ah, what happened here? It doesn't look like a disc golf injury to me because, you know, when I see injuries like this, I think, you know, back when I used to play baseball sliding into a base rung I used to think uh, I think basketball you know stepping on someone's foot I mean or I could you know I've, I've hurt my ankle like this you know just tripping on something um, one time way back in high school and you know just I don't really see you don't really see ankle injuries like that in disc golf too often unless someone slips and falls just the way Simon did so I said ah, oh, what happened doesn't look like a disc golf injury to me he said yeah I slipped on the last hole today not gracefully and you know, I, I messaged him again and I said, ah oh, man, I really hope you get well soon. And you know, we've all been seeing the way, the way he's been putting lately has been so entertaining and it's been so good. And Simon's really been coming into his own about becoming that really high caliber player. And I uh, really hope Simon gets a speedy recovery. And that's all I wanna cover in today's episode. Thank you for watching. This is Iceberg TV and take care.